Welcome to the Worship Center in Bryan's Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. I'm glad you joined me today. Here are some of these things that God has put on my heart for today. You know, there's this contradictory message sent out by our culture. It's everywhere, and yep, it's contradictory, which is why it can trip us up so badly. The first part of it is that you deserve to be incredibly rich, supremely powerful. You deserve to be totally popular and to be an influencer that everyone listens to and famous and well-loved by everybody. And, you know, and you go online and there's so many people living their best life and living out their truth and they're happy and rich and famous and well-loved doing whatever they feel like and hanging out with these incredible, beautiful friends all the time. That's the first part of the message. The second part is that if you're not incredibly rich, if you're not powerful, if you're not famous, if you're not influencing millions of people, if you're not well-loved by a lot of people, and if you don't have more than a million followers, you're an insignificant nobody, and your pathetic little life isn't worth living. That's what they tell you. And that's a source of major depression for hundreds of thousands of people, people of all ages. They just can't stand it that they're not measuring up to what they're seeing and hearing and being told that they ought to be. I mean, you might try your hardest and do your best and be as driven as you possibly can be, and you can make as many friends as possible, and yet it still won't be happening for you. So that brings us to the third part of this contradictory message that the world puts on us. And it's that since all these things aren't happening for you, they've been deprived from you, then there's something major wrong with you. You're flawed. There's an issue with you. There are maybe other people holding you back or taking these things from you, and maybe they shouldn't have what they have. Maybe you should take it away from them or something. Like, there's no room for ordinary or average in the fantasy that this world tries to get you to buy into. So we end up with all these people who are miserable and hurting and even bitter, living, though, in the midst of good things, in the midst of some blessings, but unable to enjoy them because our culture says that's not enough, that enough isn't enough. So like good little servants of this world system, People spend most of their lives trying to get their piece of the pie and they feel like they have to look out for themselves or somebody else might get their piece of the pie that they deserve. You know, listen, success in life is not about what you can get. It's not about money. It's not about the things you own. It's not about possessions. It's not even about followers or subscribers or how many people have viewed your channel or even If you have or don't have a channel, or if you don't have much social media presence at all, success and a good life isn't about that. There are plenty of people who have what others would call a really good life, but they're unhappy and depressed and feel like they're insignificant, and they have to deal with feelings of worthlessness because of the lies of this world. You know, if you've achieved everything this world tells you that you need, or if you're nowhere even close... This world's culture is to make you miserable and unhappy and keep you there. Instead of enjoying the moment, people end up where they resent every minute that stands between them and the achieving of their dream, whatever that is. You know, we need to move from a worldly mindset to a kingdom of God mindset. Sometimes we need to just back off, chill out, take some time to appreciate the people in our lives who do care about us, people that appreciate us. We need to appreciate that we have a place to stay, that we have clothes and access to food and other good things, and just enjoy that feeling. Spend some time not online. Spend some time looking around and appreciating the good things that you do have and Take a few deep breaths and tell God that you appreciate him and tell him some of the people in your life that you appreciate and thank him for the good things in your life that he's put there just because he's a good God. I mean, actually call them to mind, you know, and name them to him. You know, God, I'm appreciative of this. Thank you for that person, et cetera. And it's amazing the transformation begins to take place when you do that at least once a day for a few minutes at a time. Within a couple days, there's major good things happening. You know, when I first got around the people of God, so many of them had this sense of satisfaction and serenity that I didn't have. You know, and I could see there was a gap between where I was and where they were. 
And I needed to let go of some of my attitudes and to become a more loving and caring person, to be more satisfied in life. I needed a new attitude. I needed a new vision because I had felt so pressured by the world, by what other people were saying that I had to be and what they said I had to achieve. I mean, you've probably felt that way too, you know, and you wonder if you have what it takes to make it in life. And when I came to the Lord, I found out that if you have Jesus, you do have what it takes to live a fulfilling and terrific life. The Holy Spirit in your heart and in your mind will bring the mind of Christ to work in you and to cause his thoughts to begin to transform your thinking and your attitude. A number one issue for most of our lives is this, and I have to keep on top of it all the time. How is my attitude? The biggest handicap a person can have in their Christian life is a bad or negative attitude. No matter how much you know about the Bible, if you don't have the right attitude, you're not going to be able to flourish. That's why the Bible tells us in Romans 12, verse 2, to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, the changing of our attitudes, as we get the words of the Bible down into our spirits and let the Holy Spirit have his way in our lives. We'll never grow in the Lord with a bad attitude and if we're critical of other people. Why is that? Because wherever we are, there are people at home, at school, at work, at the store, everywhere. And the church, the body of Christ is also people. You know, people that are hurting, people that have been changed, people who are being changed, but we're praying with people, reaching people, worshiping with people. And if you have a poor attitude or a negative critical attitude, people are going to want to pull away from you and you'll never be fulfilled. You'll never be fruitful. A major thing for a lot of us to accept is that we still need to grow. Maybe that our attitude isn't the best and we need to work on it. That's hard for a lot of us. But you know, when you go to a buffet, you get your plate and you go to the food bar, what are you looking for? What you don't like? No, you're looking for what you do like. Then when you do find it, you go for the best piece of it. So with the rest of life, which is very much like a buffet, zero in on what you want. Tune in on what's good. Everybody has some good. Believe in the power of God to work in your life. When I first came into the body of Christ, I thought, you know, these people are living this abundant, overcoming life. They're full of joy, but I never could do that. Years later, I know that God can work in the life of anyone who's willing for him to. Believe that God can work in you and through you. When you're sharing your faith with people, Your lifestyle and your attitude communicate so much. And if we don't set a positive example, we're going to be unhappy and ineffective. You know, you want to always be demonstrating or let it come to the surface what Jesus has done for you and in you, and that you're confident that he can do the same for them. Number two is to really care about people. Look for the good in them. Don't be trying to find fault. Don't condemn them or put them down, pick them apart. You've got faults. I've got faults. And you know, if anyone ever had a right to judge people, it was Jesus. But he said in John 8, verse 15, you judge after the values of the flesh. You judge by how things look to you. He said, but I judge no man. Jesus said, I'm not here to do that. And sometimes as Christians, we get a few changes made in our lives, and all of a sudden, we have a lot of opinions, we have a lot of dogmatic, inflexible views, and we have a lot of church theories. You know, especially if we don't know somebody who's dealing with a particular issue or situation. But you know, the moment you get to know someone and what they're dealing with and their struggles, it's amazing how your attitude changes. When you get to know the people you were previously shooting at verbally, it adds a different quality to your attitude and even how you say things. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you change everything you think, but it'll definitely change how you think about it and how you say it. We don't know what's inside of people. We don't know what their need is or what their pain is, but you can offer a prayer. You can invite people to church or to worship with you. And don't accept negative input from people about you. Don't be negative and critical. You can't get to the top if you're putting people down. Learn to look for the good Learn to look for the good in everybody. And remember where you were when Jesus found you. Then number three is to keep believing in the Lord's power to work in your life. We know a lot of people who don't believe that their lives can ever change or that they can ever be in a better situation, so they don't even try. They've been beat down so many times. They failed so often. They figure, why even try? And I get it. Sometimes you just can't imagine that you could ever accomplish anything because of your circumstances or your past failures or somebody criticizing you all the time. 
And I know that you can stay like that if nobody comes along and encourages you or pulls you out. You know, you can just stay in that place and get to where after a while you don't even feel the pain of it anymore. But I'm telling you, if you'll ask Jesus to come into your life, ask the Lord to work in your life, in your situation, and believe that he can and that he will do it, if you'll start reading your Bible and getting those truths down into your spirit, well, you'll get the faith you need. And you'll believe that God can work in your life and he can work in anybody else's life. Then number four, live out what God's doing in your life. Decide to be 100% for the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit work in your life all he wants to. You know, even in the regular things of this world, if you don't have your heart 100% into what you're doing, it's not exciting. It's, you're not going to go anywhere with it. It's not going to get you where you need to go. I mean, even the circus is boring if you're just sitting there watching it and you're half-hearted and not paying attention. So don't be limited by the half-hearted people around you, even if they're church people who seem to only be halfway sold out for the Lord and halfway not. Determine that you're going to be 100% for the Lord, and you're going to let him have his way in your life and spirit. I mean, read the Bible. Maybe use an app that gives you a chapter a day or a study on various topics. You might also want to get the Got Questions app. And have that on your phone. It's free and it helps you answer some of the questions you might have. I use it a lot. And it's really helpful when talking with people. Thousands of questions that come up about God and life and the Bible and all kinds of things. That's the Got Questions app. And when you start reading God's Word every day, you'll get excited about what the Holy Spirit will be teaching you as you read. You know, I've been walking with the Lord a long, long time, and I'm still excited about living with Him and loving Him and learning what He's about, and I'm excited about what He's showing me and teaching me and new things that I'm still being shown in the Word of God by the Holy Spirit. I mean, there's nothing like it. It doesn't get old. Number five, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Yes, there is so much craziness going on in every part of our culture, in every group, in every institution, that if you're serious about what you're doing, if you're really dedicated, you can be very ashamed of what other people might be doing who are seeming to represent what you believe. Yep, there's bad cops, crazy teachers, whacked out doctors, political leaders that are nuts, sports stars and celebrities who seem to have lost touch with reality, and there are definitely religious nut jobs and crazies. And because of that, it's easy for people to lump you in there with them. You know, you won't believe how many times in my life, you know, there's some pastor or preacher who gets himself into trouble and making the headlines and people bring that to me and say, oh yeah, all preachers are con artists and fakes and they're only in it for the money and all that stuff. And guess what? There are some that are like that. And that's why they're in the news because they shouldn't be like that. And the rest of them though, those that really love the Lord and are living sacrificially just to be in the ministry and they're helping people with needs and feeding the community and helping people through their hurts. Those aren't the ones that are making headlines. The ones who are simply living out the gospel aren't going to be superstars in this life. And they don't even want to be. But as many people like that as there are, none of them are Jesus. None of them are living the way that he has for us to live unless we're walking with the Lord. Amen? And there's always going to be hypocrites. And don't let them keep you from your walk with the Lord and with serving him. I mean, what do they have to do with you? You know, you just keep on keeping on with the Lord and keep on reaching out to people that are hurting. Concentrate on your own walk with God and keep moving on. Remember that you're bringing people a better way of life, one that you've experienced. It's better than anything this world could ever offer. And I never met a person who couldn't say, I really want something better in life. I've never met somebody who doesn't. And whatever it is, happiness, love, better income, a better job, maybe a more peaceful home life, every person alive wants better than what they're having. You know, this world promises everything, but it can't deliver on its promises. And I can tell you that with Jesus, you have your heart's needs met. There's a joy, there's a release, there's a satisfaction, a love for people that comes, a love for God and a love for life. And that's when it gets really good, when you can help somebody else get what they need and what they're searching for. And, you know, these are just a few thoughts that the Lord put on my heart to share with you today. I hope that they encourage you. I hope that they help you. Be sure to share them with somebody today. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and to subscribe and be part of our online Worship Center family. 
Know this too, I do pray for you. I pray for our online family, and I always value your prayers for me. Thanks so much, and God bless you. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org. Or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family.